Initial management of burns. Outline. Introduction. Epidemiology of burns. Definition. Burn physiology. Initial evaluation. Assessment of severity. Initial management of burns. Initial treatment of burns. Resuscitation. Referral. Introduction. Burns are a global public health problem, accounting for an estimated 2,65,000 deaths annually. Non-fatal burns are a leading cause of morbidity, including prolonged hospitalization, disfigurement and disability, often with resulting stigma and rejection. Epidemiology of Burns Burns are among the leading causes of disability, adjusted life years, DALYS, lost in low and middle income countries. In India, over 1 million people are moderately or severely burned every year. Definition A burn is an injury to the skin or other organic tissue primarily caused by heat or due to radiation, radioactivity, electricity, friction or contact with chemicals. Burn physiology Tissue burn Coagulation with microvascular changes in dermis Loss of skin barrier Release of vasoactive mediators Interstitial edema Decrease in cardiac output and metabolic rate Initial evaluation the burns patient has the same priorities as all other trauma patients. The patients with burns injury should be properly and completely evaluated. The evaluation of the burn patient is organized into a 1. Primary Survey 2. Secondary Survey Primary Survey Assess A, B, C, D, E Airway Breathing Beware of inhalation and rapid airway compromise Circulation Good IV access and early fluid replacement Disability Compartment syndrome Exposure Percentage area of burn The emphasis of primary survey is to support the airway, gas exchange and circulatory stability. The evaluation of airway is of the foremost importance in burn patients. Early recognition of impending airway compromise followed by prompt intubation can be life-saving. Obtain appropriate vascular access and place monitoring devices then complete a systematic trauma survey including radiographs and laboratory studies as indicated. Secondary Survey Burn patients should undergo a secondary survey, which should include a determination of the mechanism of injury, an evaluation for the presence or absence of inhalation injury and carbon monoxide intoxication, an examination for corneal burns, the consideration of the possibility of abuse, and a detailed assessment of the burn wound. Assessment of Severity The severity of the burn is mainly determined by A. Burned surface area Determine the percentage area of burn Rule of nines B. Depth of burn A. Burned surface area Determine the percentage area of burn Rule of nines The rule of nines 
is used to estimate the burned surface area in adults. The body is divided into anatomical regions that represents 9% or multiples of 9% of the total body surface. The outstretched palm and fingers represent about 1% of the body surface area. If the burned area is small, assess how many times your hand covers the area. The rule of nines method is imprecise for estimating the burned surface area in children as they have varying surface areas. The estimation may be done using the surface area calculation considering the age of the child as shown below. B. Depth of burn Depth of burn Thickness Wound appearance Pain Causes First degree Superficial Erythema absence of blisters Present Sunburns Second degree Partial thickness Red or mottled blisters flash burns Absent if deep Hot liquids Third degree Full thickness Dark and leathery dry Absent Fire electricity or lightning prolonged exposure to hot liquids or objects Initial management of burns First aid If the patient arrives at the health facility without first aid having been given Drench the burn thoroughly with cool water to prevent further damage and remove all burned clothes, useful up to three hours after burn. If the burn area is limited, immerse the site in cold water for 30 minutes to reduce pain and edema and to minimize tissue damage. Cold water compresses, changed frequently, can also be used for localized burns. If the area of the burn is large, after it has been doused with cool water, apply clean wraps about the burnt area or the whole body to prevent systemic heat loss and hypothermia. Children are at a greater risk of developing hypothermia. Do not apply ice or gel burn products as a first aid measure. Do not use alcohol-based solutions. Burns to the eyes require early copious irrigation with normal saline or water. Irrigate chemical burns with copious volumes of water but should not be used on extensive areas as can cause hypothermia. Initial treatment of burns. For signs of airway burn or lung injury, arrange intubation and oxygenation as soon as possible and before airway swelling occurs. Pain relief should be provided to the patient as soon as possible. Use analgesics or sedatives as appropriate. Example, paracetamol, opiates, nitrous oxide, fentanyl. Administer tetanus prophylaxis, all cases of burns. Start fluid resuscitation, refer to section on resuscitation below. For greater than 15% burns, insert IV line, urinary catheter, and nasogastric tube. The burns are sterile initially. Focus the treatment on speedy healing and prevention of infection. Use standard trauma management for other injuries, example, suture lacerations, splint fractures, etc. Debride all bullae, excise and debride necrotic tissue. After debridement, gently cleanse the burn with 0.25% chlorhexidine solution, 0.1% cetrimide solution or another mild water-based antiseptic. Do not use alcohol-based solutions. After cleansing, gentle scrubbing will remove the loose necrotic tissue. Apply a thin layer of antibiotic cream, example, silver sulfadiazine. Dress the burn with petroleum gauze and dry gauze. The gauze should be thick enough to prevent seepage to the outer layers. Resuscitation During the first 24 hours isotonic solution, generally Ringer lactate solution 
should be administered with total requirement calculated using a formula. The modified Brook or Parkland formulas are the formulas that are used to help determine the initial volume of infusion. Half of the total required solution is given in first 8 hours, the remainder during the next 16 hours. In smaller children, 5% dextrose should be added to Ringer lactate solution to prevent hypoglycemia due to impaired gluconeogenesis capacity. Adults and children greater than 30 kg Parkland formula 2 to 4 ml per kg per total body surface area percent with isotonic solution, generally Ringer lactate solution with burns greater than equal to 15% for partial or full thickness burns. Half given in first 8 hours, the remainder during the next 16 hours. Children less than 30 kg, Parkland formula plus maintenance fluids. Parkland formula 3 to 4 ml per kg per total body surface area percent with isotonic solution. Generally, Ringer lactate solution with burns greater than equal to 15% for partial or full thickness burns. Half given in first 8 hours, the remainder during the next 16 hours. Maintenance fluid 4 ml per kg per hour or 100 ml per kg per day for first 10 kg plus 2 ml per kg per hour or 50 ml per kg per day for second 10 kg plus 1 ml per kg per hour or 20 ml per kg per day for all further 10 kg. TBSA is equal to total body surface area. Referral Make decisions concerning outpatient management or transfer to inpatient or burn center. The following serious burns require hospitalization. Greater than 15% burns in an adult. Greater than 10% burns in a child. Any burn in the very young, the elderly or the infirm. Any full thickness burn. All burns to face, ears, eyes, hands, feet, genitalia, perineum or a major joint even if less than 5 to 10 percent. Circumferential burns. Inhalation chemical electrical burns. Associated trauma or significant pre-burn illness, example diabetes.